Hey guys, welcome back to Salesforce Made Simple. In today's video, I got my coffee and we are going to go over how to build a Salesforce data table inside of a Salesforce flow. Um, and I said Salesforce data table, but it's really just any kind of data table. And in order to do this, make sure that you are in a developer or a sandbox environment. Don't install these three packages inside a production environment. With that said, we are going to install three different packages and I'll provide links in, in the description if you want to follow along in your own org. So to do this, I'm going to uh, show you with the first link and then I'm going to kind of go faster. But in your environment, all you have to do is highlight, um, I guess go to the home page and then highlight everything after .com, delete that out and then paste in the package link. And that will take you to the install page. Now I have the other uh, links kind of prepped on my end, but you can just repeat that same process with these other links and it will work uh, just fine. I'm going to install this for all users and acknowledge that it's from a third party install and install. So while these are installing, I'm actually going to pause the video and uh, when we come back, I will show you how to use these components inside of a screen flow in order to get a data table. And we're back. All right, so the installation completed and you'll know it's done when you come to your installed packages, click refresh. And you can see that we have, you know, the three packages installed. So uh, Salesforce gave us these the first and third package as part of the developer environment, but you'll see a data table, a flow actions base pack, and a flow screen components base pack all installed from unofficial SF. So we can now go to the flow builder. So I'm going to type in flows, open up process automation section of flows. I'm just going to make a new flow. And screen flow is what we want to build. I'm going to use the freeform layout, um, and I just always save right away so that if something crashes, I don't lose my work. And I'll just call this screen data table save. So those three components are installed, and what they actually did for us was um, create custom components, um, custom lightning components inside of Salesforce that we can now use to create a data table. So let's drag a screen element over and we'll just label this uh, screen one, configure header. I always hide the header and then I also like to hide the pause button. Press done, whoops. And we got the screen property set up but we can actually add the data table component. So over here on the left, you'll see that there's a bunch of input components that Salesforce provides but if we scroll down, we now have 14 custom components. So we didn't just do the data table, but we got a bunch from that package. And um, for this video, we're just gonna do the data table component, but feel free to come back and check out uh, other uh, options here. So before we configure this, I mean, I guess we could drag it over. Um, we actually need a collection object. So, you know, when you look at a list view in Salesforce, there's generally a list of records. And we actually need to um, go and get those objects inside the flow so that we can render them inside of our data table. So I did drag the data table over. Let's just name it table one. And I'll see if it'll let me save. Press done. Nope. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the data table off the screen for now. Press done. And we are going to go and um, query some records in Salesforce that we can use to put inside our data table. And I'm thinking what we'll do is uh, start with a get records and here we will get an account. And I, so what I think we'll do with our data table is we will pass in an account ID to the screen flow and then have the screen flow look at all of the opportunities related to that account and then show those in the table. So that's what we will build. And so to start, we need an account. And so we will look up an account where the account ID equals, and here we need to define a new resource. In order to pass an account into, or pass an ID into a screen flow, 
um, we need to set up a variable that's available for input. So we'll call this um, record ID and the data type will be text and we're going to mark this available for input so that when the flow kicks off um, we can pass in this variable uh, with the account ID. We will store just the first record and automatically store all the fields. I'm going to press done. I'll connect our screen flow to our get records. And now that we've looked up our get records uh, element here, I'm going to drag another get records to the canvas. And we'll call this get opportunities. And naturally, because it's called get opportunities, we will have to specify that we're looking up the opportunity object. And in order to find opportunities that are related to this account, we're going to need to search on the account ID field of the opportunity and specify in our filter that the account ID equals the same ID as the account from our get account records. So I'm going to select the get account records, type in ID manually, scroll down, and select ID from the account ID. The only other selection I need to make that's really important is that the number of records we store is all of them. That way, uh, this get records element creates a collection for us to reference in our data table. So we got this on the canvas now, and I'm going to connect our first get records to our second get records, and then connect our get opportunities to the screen, and press save. And then I'm going to check out the manager section, and I just want to point out that you should have a record single variable for get account and a record collection variable for get opportunities. So now that we have that, we can open up our screen again and scroll down to the custom components section of the, I guess, where all the custom components are listed. And then we can drag our data table to the screen canvas. And I'll label this uh, data table one. And we have a couple different headings that we have to fill in in order to get this data table to function. So the first is the data source and the second is the table formatting. And then we can configure table behavior if we'd like, but um, we may not need to here. So the first thing is that we have to say what kind of objects our table is going to show. In this case, it's the opportunity. And then we need to specify the collection which contains the records that we want to show in the table. And that's the reason we made our get opportunity collection. So I can just click the input screen once, it will surface our collection, I can click that again. And once it says get opportunities there, then we've properly set up the data source. We can move down to the table formatting. I can configure the columns. And here I can pick my table columns from the list. And then I can just pick those columns that I want to show in the table. So I might pick um, opportunity name, maybe the amount, maybe I could do the close date, if I could find the close date, there it is. And then I think the last field maybe would be the stage. And so when you're filling this out, I guess the, the idea is that you can really pick any of the columns. Um, I'm just showing here you know, that we could select four columns, and then when you press next, the component will show you in I guess what your data table looks like and how it will be presented to a user who's going through your screen. You have some additional options here to you know change the, the width or things like that. I'm not really going to mess with that right now. I'm just going to press done and it'll say the column wizard has finished and we can close the window. So I'm going to exit out of the window and I would like to point out in the table behavior that we could uh, require um, the user to select a row from the table. We're not actually going to configure any of the table behaviors here. I just wanted to point out that they were available. So we can press done and save. And now we're ready to do some debugging. <laughs> Woohoo! So in order to do this, I need to look up a account so that we can get the account ID. So I just went to uh, my other open Salesforce tab here. I'm just going to find an account that I can grab the ID from. We'll pick the first one in the list, United Oil and Gas. And I can always grab the account ID 
out of the URL. And we've set up our flow to accept an ID value and then go look up an account based on that ID. So now that I've copied this account ID to my clipboard, I can press debug. <laughs> Taking a second. Um, and here in the input variable section, I can just paste in that account ID. I'll press run. And so we see a couple things happen. Over on the right, our get record successfully looks up our account, and then it finds all the opportunities related to that account. Then the flow navigates to the screen section, and we can see that our data table component has successfully populated. So it's showing the name, the amount, the close date, and the stage of every opportunity related to this particular account. So as a user, I could now select um, from you know, the records in the table, you know, I can select these three. And what the table is going to do now is save all these values in a collection for us. So when I press finish, you'll see on the right that the debug details actually uh, gets quite a bit longer. And if we scroll up here, uh, you see screen one, lightning component, data table one, which is the name of our component. When we selected those three opportunities, um, they were stored here. And so what that means is we could iterate or do different operations based on the opportunities that were selected by the user. And so I can give an example of that here. Um, I just want to confirm one thing if I look at the bottom. Okay, so any updates are being committed to the database, so that's good to know. So what we could do now is, is let's I just want to give you an example of how you might um, work with the selections in the data table. This isn't actually going to be a great example, but typically what you'll do is you'll loop. So you can say loop through selected opportunities because the data table will take all of the selected opportunities, put them in a collection for us, and then we can select that collection as a collection variable. So if I open this up, you'll see that the screen component, data table one, is available to select a collection. And we have two um, options here. So one is output edited rows, and the other is output selected rows. So we'll just pick the output selected rows, press done. And I could connect our screen to this loop. And maybe what we want the loop to do is count the amount of the three or four opportunities that the user selects. So I could drag an assignment element to the canvas. We could call it count opportunity amount. And in order to keep track of the amount, we would need a variable. So I'll create a new resource. And the resource type will be the variable with a data type of currency. You can just call this opportunity amount. We'll set the default value to zero and press done. And so now our assignment element is going to update this opportunity amount variable with um, whatever we specify over on the right. So I'll say that the operator is add. And in each case, we are going to add uh, the current item from our loop, which we just defined. And we are going to select the amount and press done. We will connect our loop to the assignment and then drag the assignment back to the loop and press save. So I'll debug this one more time just to show you what it looks like um, once we've selected opportunity elements and then have the flow loop through them and count the amount. So again, we'll paste in our account record ID, press run. And just like it did before, it found our account and found all the opportunities related to that account. I could select these two opportunities here. And we would expect that when our flow runs, these two amounts should be added together. So I think the total for that is $390,000. I'm going to press next. 
and we'll see what happened in the debug on the right. So the table you know, creates this very long debug where it essentially stores every single field of the opportunity and that's fine. Um, we can kind of skip this whole section. We just know that the table did its thing and, and took all of those values. And that brings us down to the bottom where we get to our loop. So we see that we're looping through the selected opportunities and that's the collection provided by the data table and there's two IDs in that collection. It starts with the first one in the collection and then it goes to our assignment element. And so what the assignment does is it uh, references our newly created currency variable called op amount and it adds the amount of the current item in the loop through selected opportunities collection which is right here. So we see that the op amount, uh, the result shows that the op amount is updated to $270,000. Then it goes back to our loop and it, it goes to the second opportunity. Then it comes back to our assignment. Again, it takes that same variable and now adds the amount of the opportunity and we get that $390,000 that uh, we expect it to get. The loop ends because there's no more records in the collection and then uh, the flow ends. So that's basically it. Um, so to summarize what we learned, we learned that we could install three components into our Salesforce org and that they let us create, um, or they give us a bunch of custom lightning components that we can use inside of our flows in order to make a data table. We learned that if we pass a collection into our data table in the form of, um, you know, like the get opportunities collection, that we can configure the columns and that once a user selects you know, three or four of the records inside the data table, we can loop through all those records and perform some action in the flow. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce flow tutorials designed to turn you into a flow ninja. With that said, have a great day.